Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I'm now answering question number seven from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1, June 2021 exam. And this question here is about straight line graphs and something about radian measure and area. Um, now, question number one, no, number seven A, sorry, part A says that the line L1, which is this line over here, Okay, this straight line has equation for four y, sorry, four y plus three x equals forty eight. The line L two, the line L one crosses the y axis at the point C, as shown in Figure three. State the y coordinate of C. Okay, so we don't need anything about line two in this first part of the question. So it crosses the 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 y axis at the point C. Now everywhere on the y axis x is equal to 0. If I make an coordinate, for example, down here, it will be 0 minus something. It will be 0 plus something. It will be 0 plus something. So the x coordinates of any point on the y-axis is zero, is 0. That means on the y-axis, the x value is equal to 0. So x equals 0 is actually the equation of the y-axis because everywhere on the y-axis, x is 0. So all you need to do is take the equation of the line and substitute it substitute instead of x zero and you'll find the y coordinate of the where the line passes through the x uh, the y axis sorry so when x equals zero you have four y plus three times zero equals 48 so you're left with four y equals 48 so y is equal to 12. okay so you, that's all they want the y coordinate of c so there's the answer if they say state the coordinates of c then you'd put zero 12. Here they're saying just the y coordinate. So you do, they want you to just write down the y. Y equals 12 is the answer. Okay, that's the answer for part A. And now for part B. Okay, part B says the point D, 8, 6 lies on line 1. As you can see, this is the point 8, 6. Okay, and the line L2 passes through D and is perpendicular to line 1. So these are perpendicular lines. L1 and L2 are perpendicular lines. The line L2 cuts the y-axis at the point E, as shown in figure 3, show that the y-coordinate of E is negative 4 over 13. Okay, so now, when two lines are, when you want to find the uh, y-coordinate of E, I need to find the equation of line 2. Then I can find where it cuts through the y-axis. So I need to find the equation of line 2. To find the equation of a straight line, I need two things. I need the gradient of the straight line, so I need the gradient of line 2, and I need the any point on the line, any point on line two. And we know the point D is on both lines, so D is on the point. Or D is a point on line two. If I use those two things, I will find the equation of the line. I can I can find the equation of the line. However, to find the gradient of line two, okay, I can use the fact that line one is perpendicular to line two. So they have gradients what are negative reciprocal. So the gradient of line one times the gradient of line two will be equal to negative 1. Or you can say they're negative reciprocals. So we need to find the gradient of line 1 first. Now, line 1 has the equation 4y plus 3x equals 48. Now, if I change it in the form y equals mx plus c, the m will be the gradient of the line. So I can read it off straight from here. So let's just do that. Let's make y the subject. So you said 4y equals minus 3x. Just take away 3x from, from both sides plus 48, so divide by sides by 4, you have minus 3 quarters x and plus 12. 48 divided by 4 is 12. That makes sense. Line 1 goes through 12. We worked that out in the first part, so we can be sure that we're correct there. Now, that means the gradient of line 1 is equal to minus 3 over 4. Therefore, the gradient of line 2 is equal to positive 4 over 3, the negative reciprocal. Okay, if you multiply minus 3 quarters by 4 thirds, you get minus 1. The product of two lines which are the product of the gradients of two lines which are perpendicular is always minus one. So if you know the gradient of one of them, the other one will be um, you change the sign and you flip it upside down. Negative reciprocal. So now I know um, the two things I need about line two. I know a point on the line which is the point D and I know the gradient of the line two which is... Second. The second thing I know okay, is the gradient of line two which is 4 thirds. So now I can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to find 
the equation of the line and therefore the coordinates of point E, which is the answer, the Y coordinate of point E. So to find the equation of the line, I have Y minus the Y value of this point, which is 6, equals M, which is 4 over 3, times X minus the X value of this point, which is 8. Multiply th by 3 both sides, you have 3Y minus 18 equals a multiply by 4 this side because we're expanding the bracket 4X minus 32. So we end up with, we could say, um, minus 18 plus 32 is going to be 14 equals 4X minus 3Y. So we know that when X, when y equals, sorry, when X equals 0, you're going to find the y-intercept. So you've got to find when x equals 0, we can say that 14 is equal to, so this is the equation of line 2, by the way. So when x equals 0, we have 4x minus 3y equals 14. That's the equation of line 2. When x equals 0, you have minus 3y equals 14. So therefore, y is equal to negative 14 over 3. And that's the y-coordinate of the place where it crosses the, the y-axis. Okay, the y coordinate of E is negative 14 over 3. So we found that, we've shown that. Okay, that's part B. Now for part C. It says a sector BCE of a circle. BCE is a sector of a circle. Is uh, With center C is also shown in figure 3. Given that the angle BCE is 1.8 radians, find the length of the arc BE. Now the length of the arc given uh, when the angle is mentioned in radians is given by R times theta. Now theta must be in radians, otherwise this will not give us the correct answer. It cannot be in degrees. And they gave us the angle in radians, so we can use this formula. The, the, the formula theta over 360 times 2 pi r for length of an arc is only when you've got degrees. Okay, if you've got degrees, this will use this. If you've got radians, basically you've got theta over 360 is 2 pi radians times 2 pi r. So the two pi's cancel, you're left with r theta. That's what the formula comes with, but it's only when theta is in radians because, you know, you've got two pi is equal to 360 degrees, two pi radians. So it should be only in radians. You cannot use this formula with degrees, and you cannot use the other formula that we, we mentioned there um, with radians. It has to be with degrees. This one has to be with radians. So it's very simple when it's with, with, um, with radians because we got, the we got the angle here, and r is the radius. Now the radius okay, is equal to CE, as we can see here, CE, okay, so the radius is equal to um, 12 minus minus 14 over 3, remember this coordinates of this point C was 0, 12, okay, so the distance between C and E is going to be 12 minus minus 14 over 3, so R is equal to 12, uh, let me just put this into the same denominator, so 12 is 36 over 3 plus 14 over 3, which is going to be, that's going to be 40. Uh, sorry, 50 over 3, not 40. 36 plus 4 is 40 plus 10. That's 50 over 3. So that's the radius. So therefore, you can say the length of the arc is R, which is 50 divided by 3, times theta, which is 1.8 radius. Okay, so you can calculate that. Okay, 50 divided by 3. Okay, times 1.8. And that gives us 30, so L, L is equal to 30 units. Okay, so that's the, that's the length of the arc BE. Okay, the radius, which is from C to E, which is that 12. Okay, and of course you're going to add that 14 over 3 because it's on the other side negative, And then times theta, which is 1.8 radians. And you've got your area, you've got the length of the arc, not the area, the length of the arc. Okay, this is a formula for the length of the arc, means from B to E, this length of this, this arc, this part of the circle. Okay, that's C done, and now on to D. It says the region C, B, E, D, um, shown shaded in figure 3, consists of the sector B, C, E, joined to the triangle C, D, E. Okay, so we know a few things. We also know this, this, this point was 8, 6. This was a point D, 8, 6. So we know what C is, we know what D, D is, we know what E is, okay? And we've got to calculate the exact area of the region C, B, D, E, okay? So we worked out just now that the um, radius of this sector is equal to 50 over 3. That's from C to E. Just make sure that's correct. The radius was 50 over 3, that's right. 
Okay, so we know the radius. So the area that we're looking for is the area of the sector. Okay, the area of the sector plus the area of the triangle. Okay, the area of the sector is given by a formula which is um, a half r squared theta. And the area of this triangle is a half times the base times the height. Now we can consider the base from here to here, which is 50 over 3. Okay, I just wrote 5 there. Times 50 over 3, that's the base. Times the height is this length between there and there. You can consider, consider that as a vertical height. Okay, that's probably the easy way to do it. Okay. Um, you can consider that that the height and that the base, but then it's going to be a bit of a hassle finding these lengths. So we know already that, that the if we consider this the base, that's 50 over 3. And we can see that very clearly the distance from there to there is 8. So you multiply that by 8. That's a half times the base times the height. That's the area of the triangle. That's a half r squared theta. That's the area of the sector. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to actually write this as a half times the base times the height just to see the formula. And then I'll say a half times r squared. The radius was 50 over 3 squared plus a times theta, which is times 1.8 plus a half times the base, which I'll take as this length here, which is CE, which is um, 50 over 3 times the height, which is the distance from there to there, which is 8 units. D is x coordinate is 8. Okay, so it's like 8 along the vertical height of this, perpendicular height of this. Okay, so that's um, that's going to be times 8. Okay, so that will give us our answer. If I stick that in my calculator, I'll have 0 0.5, which is a half, times, I'm going to put 50 over 3. I'll put this in a bracket. So I've got to square all of it. Okay, that's a half times 50 over 3 squared times 1.8. Okay, that gives you 250 plus, and we got um, 25 over 3 times 8. 25 over 3 times 8. Okay, and that gives you 950 over 3. So the area is 950 over three units squared okay let me write that a bit neater 950 divided by three square units so that's the answer to question number seven um part d that's all the question done i think there's no other part that's right the next is question eight so we've completed question seven and um other questions from this paper can be found from this playlist that should appear in this section other questions from uh, this topic of straight line graphs and i guess i'll also put it in the playlist for radians radian measure will be over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can see other papers p2 p3 p4 s1 m1 igcse papers by um, going to the description below this video and you'll find a link to those thank you for watching and see you soon